Hi guys, and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. We're gonna jump back in with our lovely friend, Fern Ranger, and uh, we're gonna check and see what all she's been doing. So, yeah, outskirts Ocean City. We were gonna go back to the gas station, but we're gonna check in our inventory and see if there's something to raise our mysticality. I believe that's what we were doing. That's Moxie, so mysticality was this one, right? Yeah. I will lose the slightly clammy effect. Sweet. Too sweet, in fact. I got it. Okay, so our mysticality is at three. So we should be able to do the thing in the gas station now, I hope. Y'all know how I like to complete things. Let's... Is that it? Yeah, figure it out. There's uh, an engraved plate on the side that says Helico Portable Gasoline Generator. Machine for generating portable gasoline. Harvest some. <sighs> oh my god. Okay. That's fun. Okay. Was there something else I need to figure out with Mysticality? Wasn't it the... I feel like it was the door or something. Oh, there was also that loose floorboard in the bedroom where the, um, the dust devil is. Maybe it's that. Or something in the barn? Let's... Nope, that's not what I meant to do. Mm, maybe I maybe I can't do that until after that. Uh, anything there? Nope. Ooh, I can fish in the toilet! What'd I get? Old fishing shorts. Okay. Sure. Let's let's ask him about his fishing shorts. What do you for? Uh, never mind. Wait, you don't want your fishing shorts? Can I wear them? Oh, adds to my physical armor. I will absolutely put on your fishing shorts. Okay. One of these weapons is moxie, not mysticality. That's what it was. Okay, so muscle stays the same. Fishing rods, muscle. Oh, this one's mysticality, though. Let's do the spatula, because that's going to give me better damage. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is a good idea or not. Let's try it. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, we're going to throw the rock. Spatula. Ooh. I don't know if I can live this, though, because of the... I should do... I need to do the duck call first. That's what I need to do. Okay. Let's... We'll do the duck call first. And hopefully that'll be enough. I don't care how many times I lose. I'm gonna do this. Yes, I'm sure I'm gonna fight him. Little shit. <laughs> okay. We're gonna do that. Minus one to all stats. Then we're gonna slap him. We're gonna flip. Okay. Oh, that's less. That's less. Yes. That should help me live it. No, I should have been able to survive that. What the hell? <sighs> okay. Well, that's not helping me right now. I'm gonna go out the barn. There's something over here. Moxie. Not mysticality. Well, I guess it's time to do the moxie thing and eat the cheese loaf. Eat. Yeah. Improved loafing. Okay. Well, we're gonna do this then. Search. I got welding gloves. What do them do? Ooh. Thick pair of gloves designed to protect your hands from errant sparks caused by your negligence and lack of welding skills. Plus one to hot armor. <gasps> Will that actually help me do the thing now? Against the dust devil? Please tell me yes, because this is the last thing I have to do. Yes. Okay, I'm still gonna bleed. Yep, 
but that's fine because we're going to do this. And then I'm going to smack him with the spatula. You're going to do two. You're going to heal me. Oh, man. Okay. Throw the rock. Can I still not win this? Come on, man. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Maybe I don't go for the heals. Maybe I throw on Eldridge. Because he's going to increase my stuff for each round, so... Let's give it a shot. You're going to stab? It's going to make the bleed. I'm going to use that. I'm going to smack with spatula. You're going to stab. You're going to raise my moxie. Ah! Why? This is getting a little ridiculous. What am I missing? Let's... Anything? No. Let's go talk to the hobo again, I guess. What was his name? Howie? Interrupt his tootling. Well, I dealt with the railroad bull. You did? Well, that's real service to the hobo community. I got nothing to offer you a reward, but I sure won't forget this. No problem. Um, let's take my leave. I need one more moxie. Ooh, there's something in there. I can grab it. The crowbar, the crowbar, the crowbar for the, for the, for the, the thingy under the board. I got this. It's spread up. Old cellar, go down there. Oh no. Spideys, take the unbroken ones. Yes, I know they're really gross. Jar gross old vegetables. Cool. Crude ladder out of wood bits. Do it. Rickety unsafe, just the way you like it. Old bacon grease. Uh, okay, what can I... What are these for? Reduce an em enemy's muscle, mysticality, and moxie by three when you chuck it at them. That's hilarious. I love that. Muscle plus one physical damage. Mysticality. Muscle. Moxie. It doesn't seem like it matters at all. Uh, let's check the character sheet. I got no XP. Okay. Interrupt him either way. You can't tell if they're fighting or flirting. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Ew! I'm poisoned! Uh, let's throw that. Ooh, then I can still do a one of those. And uh, a one of these. Oh, nice. Okay. <gasps> that could be bad. Oh, God. Am I dead? Yep. <laughs> okay. So I just have to take one of them out all at once. That's fine. That's not the end of the world. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. That's fine. Interrupt him. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get me. Okay, so first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw one of those at you. And then we're gonna throw that at you. And then flip. Bye, Spooter. Okay, this should help. Dangerous blind spider. My mysticality is up. Okay, well, all we gotta do is this. And then that. Got him. I did it. Eldridge grows stronger. Woo. Ew. Spooters. I don't like spooters. They're gross. Talk to him. Uh, seriously? Is it? Nothing else? Okay. 
I'm not still trying to keep going in the bedroom. I have to be missing something. Okay, I can't unpack my stuff. Mm. Honestly, I think we'll put Charles back on there. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anything else. I need Moxie to open that. Okay. Nothing in there. Already did that. Nothing else in the car, right? Okay. See, I feel like I messed something up now with that dust devil fight, but... Oh my god, I just realized how I can do it now. I still have one of the jars. Okay, we gotta be real careful about this. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So it's jar, rock, spatula, jar, rock, spatula. Okay, you're going to heal me. Okay, and then I'm going to take the bleeds. So, and then rock. Spatula. Yes, I got him. The Dust Devil is defeated. Excellent. Okay. Now do I have anything to talk to you about? I defeated the Dust Devil. Did you now? Well, thank you kindly. Of course, it's a bit late for my purposes, but I imagine the next occupants will be grateful. I don't think it didn't rough you up too bad. No. There's a snap. I still don't have anything else that raises my moxie. <laughs> I did it wrong somehow. I don't know how. Uh, I'm upsetty. I should have got the moxie thing. I don't know that I can come back. I really don't. Because there's nothing else, right? I did all the things. I guess. Was there just one darked out spot? I don't know. I already searched that. Those are all. Yep. Nope. I guess that's it. Well. Since I can't get the, the backpack open, unless I'm missing something over here. I guess it's fine. Let's talk to him. Yeah, let's get out of here. That we're on our way. Get back on the bus. You climb back on the bus and return to your seat. Soon you're dozing off the sound of rain splattering on the window beside you. Unfortunately, it's barely an approximation of sleep. The sort of sleep that you slip into so gradually you don't know you're asleep until something wakes you up. Plunk it straight. You realize your meandering thoughts of the past few minutes have been utterly strange, shadowy tendrils of whispering ideas. Hey kid, does your stop, right? That are now totally forgotten. Ugh, whoa. All ashore was going ashore. Thanks for traveling, Willis Bus Co. Bye. Here's a dude. Let's talk to him. Nice weather we're having. He smiles and looks up and lets rain splash on his face for a while. Yeah, suits me just fine, I guess. Wise man once said, the rain falls on poor men and rich men alike. Is that before umbrellas were invented or... My name is Gus, by the way. I'm Fern. 
Nice to meet you, Fern. Say, you wouldn't happen to have a couple of meat to spare, would you? Sure. Thank you very much, Fern. Old Gus won't forget your kindness, you bet. Take her easy, Gus. I'm going to befriend all the hobos because they seem like the best people. Going seems inaccurate. Uh, army surplus store closed for the night. Cola war surplus. I don't want to go with the antique store yet. Dig through the trash. Got cheap cologne. I don't know what that does. I know it says please. <laughs> this store sells broken glass and drafts. Building is perfectly solid. Trash has reached, has exceeded its can's grasp. Given the current conditions, dark and stormy, you probably shouldn't wander an alley. That's fair. Door in the newspaper office is locked and the windows are boarded up. Looks like print really is dead. You would have thought it would have at least seven or eight more decades left. Somebody just scratched some weird symbols into the sidewalk here. It's late. The bank is closed. Alrighty. We've done some stuff. Let's go check out of the antiques. <laughs> the bell over the door jangles as you walk into Murray's Antiques. The young woman at the counter looks up as you enter. Oh, hi! You must be Fern. We don't get customers at this time of night. We don't get many customers at this time of night. Or at all, really. That's me. You were expecting me? Yeah, Murray didn't say much about you, but he gave me that letter to mail. My name's Jessica. Oh, jeez, you're soaking wet. Come on in and I'll get you a towel. You walk over to the counter, trying not to drip on any vintage bric-a-brac as Jessica grabs a threadbare bath towel from a shelf, pulls the tag off before tossing it to you. Thanks. Is Uncle Murray here? His letter wasn't very specific. He isn't. You said that in a kind of ominous way. Where is he? Jessica sighs. I wish I knew. He had a line on another artifact and said it was going to be a tough one. I told him he should get some backup, but he wasn't willing to wait. He just wrote that letter and told me to mail it if he didn't come back. Sir, is something I'm missing? This is an antique shop, right? You make trying to talk to great Aunt Ruthie into selling her mother's Chesterfield sound like a deadly spy mission. Yeah, this is going to take some explaining. I'm definitely intrigued now. I don't have a lot of time just now, but follow me and I'll give you a quick sketch. Okay. Jessica leads you into a back room, furnished with some desks and strange-looking machinery. Welcome to our back office, the hub of our, hub of our little operation. I'm guessing by operation, you're talking about something other than antiques. Well, yes and no. See, a few years ago, Murray found out that there were some, a bunch of artifacts circulating that are, well, hanky would be an understatement. Hinky? Murray called them tainted. Dark magic. Real bad mojo. You know, cursed. Yeah, I know about that kind of thing. I like that haunted perk so much. <laughs> it's no joke. That's what our real job is. Here, the antique store is just, well, it's not exactly a front. We find a lot of regular antiques, too, and selling them helps us keep in scratch. But really, we're trying to hunt down all these evil doodads and neutralize them so nobody gets hurt. And Uncle Murray went out to get one and never came back. That's the long and short of it, yep. What do you say? Yeah? Absolutely. I'm always up for a crazy adventure. Great. You hear the shop door opening, and after a moment, a goblin pokes her head around the office. Hello? Oh, hey, that's Swell Timon. Hey, Gabby. Murray's sister's kid showed up. Here to meet you. Come here. Hi, Gabby. Pleased to meet you. Oh, I like that they give you other gender options. That's really nice. Hello, Gabby. I'm pleased to meet you. Hi, hello. The pleasure is all Gabby's. Gabby, would you be a dear and carry her luggage to Murray's room and grab some blankets and stuff out of the cupboard? She can sleep there until we find Murray. You've gotten it. Gabby picks up your suitcase and carries it through a door to the back room. Great. I could really use some sleep. Let's ask Jessica about the messy desk. Whose desk is this? Murray's. He gave nagging him on straight it up before somebody bumps into him. We have to call the National Guard to pick up, to dig him out of the avalanche. With curse-proof shovel and a squad of exorcists handy. Anyway, best not to mess with it. Will do. I mean, won't. Do. Not sure what this clock is telling you, but it sure ain't the time. Nobody needs a call right now. Whose desk is this? 
Charles Wallace, our handyman. I, like, like Wrinkle in Time, Charles Wallace? Grown up? I hope that's the, I hope that's the case. That'd be really nice. He's up fixing a leak on the roof right now, but he'll be back later tonight. I see. I don't have time to play games right now, but I want to. <gasps> White cat. Kitty. What's this cat's name? Calliope. Murray got her a couple years ago. Scritch. Kisses. Doesn't react good at all. Why doesn't Calliope like me? Eh, she'll warm up eventually. Try giving her some sardines. She loves those. Do you have any sardines? No, we're all out. You can get some tomorrow. They have them at the Cola Wars sur surplus store next door. Okay. Modern radio. Where does that door lead? You, you open the door, there's just a brick wall behind it. Apparently it goes nowhere. Whew. You can't even hazard a guess as to what this contraption does. Um, Let's go in the room. Hang on a sec, you can't go to sleep yet. I'm pretty sure I can. I bet I could do it right here while I'm still standing up. <laughs> well, I hate to spring this on you, but there's something we need you to do before the night's over. Mission already. You know those cursed artifacts I was talking about? Since info on them is so sketchy, we've been working on a machine that can detect them with radio waves. I call it the Detectron 1000. We've just gotten it up and running since Murray left, and it turns out there's a tainted thing practically right on our doorstep. That doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's not great. I was going to have Gabby go get it. That's why she came over tonight. But since you turned up out of the blue, guess there's no time like the present. Probably not exaggerating when I say this. Is, there's literally no time except for the present. What? As in there might not be a future. Okay. You don't have to go far. Just down the other end of the block, if the readings are right. There's a newspaper office that got shut down earlier this year. Should be in there. Well, Gabby will go with you. She's good in a fight. A fight? Oh, heck yeah! Well, hopefully... Yeah, well, hopefully it won't come to that, but you never know. Hey, Gabby? Go to the newspaper office with her and help her get that hat, okay? Okay. Gabby is ready for action. Let's mosey. Make an excited sigh. <sighs> Alright, fine. You said a hat? A cursed hat? Oh, Gabby's a companion now. According to the readout, yeah, a men's fedora, probably. And I'm supposed to, what, break in and take it? Well, not break, exactly. I managed to finagle a spare key out of the guy at the realtor's office. Pretty sure that still counts as breaking and entering. You'll be in and out and back here in bed before you know it. Sweet. Let's do this. Okay, Gabby. Let's go. We're gonna go take a look inside here real quick. And see what the heck is going on. We're gonna unlock it. Let's go inside. Okay. Coffee. Pour it in a cup. You got a nasty old coffee. Okay. Let's read the document. Government corruption at an all-time high. The government has once again slashed funding to the city services, social programs, citing waste, but without offering any supporting figures to it and explaining where the funds have been reallocated to. Additionally, anonymous sources report Cuts off abruptly, maybe as a result of the pink slip next to the typewriter. Let's read the slip. Curtis, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times, not enough people buy the paper anymore to keep the lights on in this joint. Electricity is expensive because it is very recent innovation. As such, fully half your salary is paid by the government subsidies. This is to say that the hand that feeds you is the hand you keep biting. We go way back, buddy, but you've given me no choice. Clean out your desk and scram. Grover Burgess, Editor-in-Chief. Yikes. Um, I want to see if there's other things. Ooh, gaze into the thingy. Keep watching. Keep watching. Anything interesting coming up? Babe Ruth gets a haircut. I think you could have left a better tip. Um, I don't see anything super. No, it's back to the beginning. Okay. Um, I want to see if there's any, like, interesting items. Oh, that said cufflinks. Take them. Reporter's cufflinks. What do those do? <gasps> Increase my mysticality. And that is what we're using with this weapon, so I'll take it. 
Well, what did I have in that spot instead? The welding gloves, I guess? Yeah, I did. That's unfortunate, but I can always put them on if I need the hot armor. Read this, read this. Big heavy water cooler. Search the wreckage. Nothing but a pile of homemade toothpicks. Can I take the toothpicks? Drawer slightly ajar. Nasty old leftovers. Ew, what are those do? Oh, that's a throw at enemies kind of thing. Alrighty, I'm gonna get a drink. Then we're gonna check out some of this stuff in the desks. Feel like we got some stuff to read. Seems that way. Let's start all the way over here. We already got that, so let's read this pink slip. Hinden, I'm not paying you to publish cockamamie conspiracy theories. In fact, I'm not paying you at all anymore. Clean out your desk and hit the road. Grover Burgess, Editor-in-Chief. P.S. Do you like the word cockamamie that I use there? It's a slang term I coined. It means ridiculous or implausible. I think it's going to catch on. Sure. Half-finished letter. Reginald, I think Burgess is on to us. We've gotten careless. In fact, I think I, maybe I shouldn't be typing out this letter instead of just talking to you in person. Why am I doing this? Meet me under the water cooler this afternoon. Oh, crap. Here comes Burgess with a pink slip. Sincerely. Doesn't say who it's from. The writer must have gotten fired before they could type their name. Also, under the water cooler? What's that all about? There's something under the water cooler? Move it. There's a trap door. Why are there people down here with fish heads? Calendar from 11 years ago. Huge black skull scrawled on July 22, 1917. What happened on July 22nd, 1917? Uh, contraption. I don't know how to do this. We're going to leave that alone. Um investigate not wanting to get any closer to them you choose to interpret investigate as squint at them from a short distance away which is probably for the best as it might be bad for your mental state to see them in too much detail these humanoid creatures are between five and six feet tall hard to judge because they're hunched over posture and covered with scales that glisten sickly in the dim light though you can't tell if this is a natural luster or due to being covered with oily sewer filth gross more notably, of course, is the fact that they have huge fish heads. Sorry if I buried the lead there, but, you know, saving the dramatic parts for last and all. Their huge, bulging, round eyes glare at you out of the darkness, faintly luminous like radium watch dials. And they hiss and gurgle at you, ow, I hit my knee, between rows of pointed shark-like teeth. Gill slits on the sides of their heads open and close like thin, wet mouths gasping for air. Or whispering terrible secrets, whichever seems more likely to you. That's disgusting and terrifying. It appears they're very displeased to see you, but you are smart enough to hold off on attacking until they've judged how much of a threat you are. Dive in and fight them! I got Gabby with me now, too, so we're gonna... We're gonna just... We're gonna just do one of those. Okay. We're just gonna... We're just gonna... We're gonna flip. Ooh, that's a five. Okay. Hey, uh, hey, Gabby. Ooh, you do. Well, slap Burly Fishman for three physical damage. Flap, slap. Get him. I like that. Nice. What you gonna do, Fishman? <gasps> not, Char not Charles the Turtle. George the Turtle. Charles the Turtle. His name is Charles. And he's adorable. Okay, Burly Fishman is defeated. Nice. Charles the turtle grows stronger. Excellent. Do I have enough? I have 25. I need to raise my moxie. Yes, please. That'll do. Now I could go back and do the thing. I got the fedora. Va <laughs> Vaguely person-shaped stain on the ground. I don't like that. I wonder if there's something in there. Oh, there's a machine. Take the paper. Got an underground newspaper. I don't know what it does. Let's read it. More of a manifesto specifically calling out government suppression of the local newspaper and the importance of a free press. There's also an amusing but 
puzzling cartoon about a dog arresting a mouse for throwing a brick at a cat's head, which the cat didn't seem to mind. Interesting. <gasps> what if I put it on while it's still cursed? A simple black felt fedora. It doesn't look cursed, but it has a palpable aura of menace about it. Nothing good can come of this. <laughs> Let's climb up the ladder. <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay, what was that? What was that year? Uh, is it this one? Uh, two. Find something interesting. Top story from that day of Ocean City's comptrollers. Passing an overly complicated sidewalk right-of-way policy that outlawed street-side newspaper vending machines and limited the maximum amount, um, maximum allowed width of newsstands to four feet. Story continues to say that the watchful eye management raised concerns about the loss of revenue and the comptroller made a vague promise to divert city funds to make up for any future shortfalls. Looks like it worked out great for everyone. Okay, I don't know what I'm looking for for those. Uh, crumpled up pink slip. Uh, Carver. Can't believe I have to tell you this, but it's against company policy for an employee to steal the printing press. You're fired. You are so fired, and I need a new phrase to describe it. I'm giving you the axe. And if I see your face here, I will be both giving you the axe and set you on fire. <laughs> P.S. How did you even lift it? You guys had, what, five accomplices? Unbelievable. Make a mental note never to pick a fight with this carver person. Okay, well that's... How many pink slips now? You see a three-ring binder. Manual for pneumatic tube system. Seems incredibly boring, so you leave it be. Why, why, why would I leave it be, though? There's a tube system downstairs! Note says, Tucker, I got you that bottle you wanted. I stuck it under the water cooler where Burgess can't find it and rat us out. So the pro he's. Under the water cooler, eh? Surely it's not still there, but it couldn't hurt to check. Maybe. Fish. What a get. Handful of clean water. Okay. Uh, I wonder if there is anything else down here. I already took a closer look at that. Check it out. Um, I don't. I don't know how to do that because it wouldn't. It did. It, it, I feel like this is the the thingy. Yeah. It controls whatever the, the, the lever system thing is for the... What? I don't know. Underground press. Literally. See? Because it looks like it goes to that. Very old manhole cover. Can I use the friggin' crowbar that I got to pry it open and go down there? Whatever. Okay, so I read those. I'm missing one, right? Uh, handwritten note. Robson. First Hinden, then Carver. Who's next? Venables says if Burgess comes to him, he's going to karate chop his desk in half. P.S. What's karate? His name is Curtis Curtis. That's hilarious. Okay, I read that one. And then I read the slip. And yeah, okay. So that's that. I don't think there's anything else in here because it won't let me do anything with the binder. And I already read this one. Yeah. Okay. Let's take the fedora back home. I say home. It's the shop. Alright. Found the hat. Looks like you found the hat. I found a hat. I guess this is the one you meant. It doesn't look unusual. Although, why well, it does creep me out a bit. Can't really put my finger on why. I know what you mean. Feels like you have a headache, except you don't, actually. More like a feeling of dread. Like something terrible is about to happen, but I don't know what yet. Yeah, it's definitely not related to the fact that I need you to take the hat and go sit in the machine over there. Uh, why? That's our uncursed machine. Gotta get the curse off that hat, right? Uh, okay. That makes sense. But, uh, what? Why can't we just put the hat in the machine? Why do I need to be involved? Because the machine needs a mind to guide the uncursing process. Together, you'll lift the curse from the hat and transform it into a sort of allegorical dreamscape. 
that the machine can transfix. Uh, what? Sorry, I know it's a lot. Let me rephrase. <clears throat> the uncursing machine uses your subconscious mind to drive a wedge between an item and its curse. The item is cleansed relatively easily, but that doesn't negate the curse fully. Once separated from the item, the machine stores the curse and allows you to physically project into it to try and resolve the metaphorical scenario at the core of its existence. That's where things get a little weird. I know it sounds crackers, but you'll have to give it a try to understand. Right. Oh, hey, it's Charles Wallace. Hello. You must be Charles Wallace. I'm Fern. That I am. Pleased to meet you, Fern. What do you do around here? Oh, you're general handyman sort of stuff. Keep the lights on and the water running. Built the Detectatron and the Uncursive Machine, too. That's some high-tech wizardry. That's nothing, really. Let me ask you something. What can I help you with? How does this weird Uncursive Machine work? Oh, I only built the thing. I can't begin to tell you how it works. The innards are all wired up to a little porcelain cat figurine that Murray found somewhere. Well, that's weird. In the traditional sense. Hmm. No, thanks. Good to meet you, though, Charles Wallace. Okay, I think this is a good place to stop for today, and um, we're going to pick up with Uncursing This Dang Fedora in the next episode. So, if you guys are enjoying this as much as I am, I will leave the first episode down below me here on the screen, that way you guys can check out everything that happened up to this point, you guys can get caught up for the next episode. I'm very much enjoying this, and Fern is over here doing some, some, some stuff. <laughs> anyway... If you guys liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell, share the video, and uh, let's bring in some more people that are, you know, fans of the the Loathing franchise. I really hope that there's another one after this one because I love these this style of game. Even though it is a lot of dialogue and it's a lot of like just walking around and trying to find things. I do love them. I think they're funny. I think they're creative. I think the stories behind them are great. And I actually do like the combat system. I think the turn-based combat really works well for this kind of game. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Okay. Okay. Bye.